Greetings fat fans. Um, today I'm going to talk about dynamic lighting and in particular how to turn your old static lip maps into new dynamic lip maps. The reason being um, firstly that Ground Branch has gone fully dynamic lit or will do. Uh, Squad has already gone fully dynamic lit. They won't even let you have static lighting and um, also because I was asked to help somebody uh, do this. Um, sorry about the noise, it's very hot today, so my window's open. Uh, you can hear some authentic South London traffic. Uh, I always thought uh, if you could distill the energy of a Friday night London road, um, it would look a bit like a mace bottle. Um, so, um, right, this is Macedonia. Uh, this is in the vanilla Unreal editor. Um, and this is fully dynamic lit uh, and it's okay so outside I mean the landscape could be better but you know um, the foliage has shadows which move as they move around um, that's okay uh, looking inside here is a house we have window lights so I've added actual lights for the windows, which gives a more realistic lighting scheme. Um, I've got a spotlight there which is casting sharp shadows, I think. Maybe it's distance, mesh fields, whatever. Um, more window lights. Um, the lighting's a little bit murky, but there is no light bleed. And if we go down the stairs, we see another light there. And we go down, and we have basically uh, it's not as nice as a static light build, but we have darkish shadows and we have um, a good transition between the light and the dark, no light bleed there. Um, this is not how it first looked when I went dynamic. So it's not just a case of uh, if your lights were static, setting them to movable, but that is your starting point. So dynamic lighting means that, usually two things, for fully dynamic lighting you turn off the light builds, so go to my world settings, um, oh that's the wrong one, uh, force, so force no pre-computed lighting. If you go to world settings and tick that, when you build it won't build light maps, so uh, start with that and say goodbye to light builds say goodbye to light maps forever hopefully um, right and then you take all the lights that you have and you make them movable uh, and there's two other special lights which are the sunlight uh, which is the directional sunlight Whee! Um, and then there is the skylight now we need to do a fair bit of work on these in terms of how we set them up. Uh, but if I turn that off, the skylight is the thing that provides the fill. Oh, no, the wrong one. Provides the fill light in the world. So without a skylight, that's what you've got, which is both unrealistic and a little bit harsh. If I turn the sunlight off, um, which is a valid thing to do if, say, it's an overcast day. Um, that's what you get. So you want the combination of sunlight and skylight in most scenes. Uh, if you've got fog, if you've got overcast, that may differ. And night lighting is a whole other thing. Um, so yeah, it didn't start out this way. So this is 4.20, which does have some differences to later versions which you're probably using. Um, so let me think how best to start here. Okay, here's some properties of the sunlight which need some tweaking to work. Um, the intensity, the, the colour, whatever is fine. You want it to cast shadows, uh, otherwise it looks rubbish. Um, I've got an atmosphere fog. Uh, this has changed in later engines with a sort of combined thing. But you also need to think about your fog, if you turn that off, well not a lot happens, but it really makes the sky look a bit more real. Um, 
back to our sunlight. So that's standard. Um, shadow bias. This is something I've not seen in later versions of the engine, but the, by default it is 0.5. Oops. Now at 0.5 you get a lot of sort of light bleed like that. Um, that's also shadow cascade stuff, so uh, let's keep it simple for now. Um, if that's too low, everything sort of self shadows itself and the lighting goes a bit horrible. Uh, but 0.5 is what they consider a fair compromise, but if you go to 0.15 it fixes a lot of the bleed. 0.15 is about as far as you can push it, uh, 0.2 maybe, 0.3. So you see there's a sort of, you have to find your own uh, place where you're happy with it. Um, so if you're getting odd bleed, bits where the shadow doesn't quite make the wall, try the shadow bias if your engine has that. I don't know if it's automatically done in later engines or there's some other way to do it. That also applies to your inside lights. So here is a standard point light which by default, if I can find it, Oh, it's a component, so it's different. There is one. Oh, there we go. So the default is that. So when you plonk down a point light somewhere, by default you get this horrible light bleed, but that need not be a problem. Just reduce that down. And again, if you put it down too low, you get weird stuff happening. Point one, point oh. Ugh. 0.05 and you can see here the effect of that lot bias being too low. So when it goes like that you've done it too low. Do it better. Um, that's a bit of trial and error but 0 0.15, 0 0.2, good starting point. Uh, dynamic lights are more expensive generally than static lighting. Uh, what static lighting does is it has a texture um, that's overlaid on meshes as defined by the light map set of UVs and when you build a level it bakes in the light to that texture which gives you potentially very nice bounced light um, does just ray tracing on it so the uh, the lighting is very realistic though it can be a bit low resolution because you need as much texture as you have wall and that can get out of hand um, and so that gets baked in. With dynamic lighting it computes that lighting every time and it takes some shortcuts. It's not going to be quite so good. And one major problem you have is bounce light is uh, is not so good. Um, so if you have a pure spotlight um, you tend not to have... So if I turn off the skylight uh, you see the effect and that's a bit too severe. So in a real setting you'd have bounce off everything and that's captured in the static builds. Um, but with the skylight so the skylight uh, helps correct that. Now um, I don't want uh, a lot of skylight because I want to have my dark spaces or at least a lot of contrast between light and dark. Um, that's a bit wishy-washy. Uh, but the skylight casts shadow. If it doesn't, uh, for some reason that's not making a difference there. Uh, what most it casts shadows, that's the one. So if the skylight isn't shadowed, this is the brightness you have everywhere. Oh, strangely. Okay, so the objects are casting shadows. Um, But it's um, so this mesh is blocking the skylight, but not completely. Because if it blocks it completely, that's what it would look like. So I don't know why it's working imperfectly. I think it's a distance mesh field thing. So there are some things that you want to make things look nice, and some things you need for better performance. Uh, distance mesh fields make a lot of things quicker, especially um, ambient occlusion and shadowing and so on. Now this is in later engines I'm sure turned on by default but you can go to project settings 
and uh, if it's not on you want to have that on. Um, every mesh has a distance mesh field so let's take random oh, that's a merged mesh that's a bit confusing. Now in later versions of the engine you can visualize the distance mesh in 4.20 you cannot um, but you have options um, so the distance field resolution scale. So what it does is it, it makes an array, a 3D array of points which record how near they are to the surface which is something that you can use to compute ambient occlusion where you darken things if they're kind of blocked from the light. That's a very poor explanation. Um, but if things aren't working there's a few things you can do. One thing is to change the resolution to 2 or higher but um, it takes a lot of memory. The memory is there. So for a small mesh we're looking at 0.03 megabytes but each time you double that you get eight times that so for the small mesh you can go up a little bit higher but it starts taking quite a while to build and starts getting quite big as soon as you go beyond a certain size and for like a bigger mesh like a house um, even going to two can be quite big so that's 1.75 or so meg um, pull that back to normal um, and so the skylight has a lot of properties that you can tweak. Um, one thing you should always make sure you have is reflection captures otherwise your lighting looks horrible. So reflection captures can do a lot of hard work um, in terms of getting your lighting. That might be why this room looks brighter. Uh, so you can change that to be something else. Never tried that. Let's put it back to how it was. Um, they sort of give you fake reflections of things, but that, that can work nicely. If you don't have reflection captures, you get the default one, which is from the blue sky and other stuff. So it looks like horrible lighting. So if your level looks horrible, make sure you've got reflection captures in. Um, they do a lot. It's not entirely strictly related to dynamic lighting, but to get the best out of dynamic lighting you need you need need, need reflection captures. Um, and what else? Uh, where was I? Distance mesh fields. So in the skylight um, I've got it using the captured scene. Uh, you can specify something that overrides and that's going to be a similar sort of deal. It's a bit bluer. You can try other things if you have different kinds of scenes. So that's a sunrise type of light. So that's something you can try. Um, never mind. Back to that we go. Um, so you can play around with that. Um, the intensity is just the brightness. Um, so lower hemisphere is solid colour. It's it, mm, it doesn't really work for me, but I have uh, so if it's not this is use, mm, hard to explain, but it, this is what the skylight's actually capturing, and it's capturing some brightness from below for some reason. Um, it can look nice for stuff outside, but for interiors it's a disaster. So. The top hemisphere is a solid colour, just clamps down the brightness of the ceilings and the solid colour is here. So I've got it not quite black because if I do it's a bit too severe and then you go too bright. So you have to carefully tweak that but a sort of very dark grey works for me. Uh, no point doing static shadows, it's not static. Um, the next interesting thing is the distance field ambient occlusion I was talking about. If that's zero, I think it's turned off. Um, but uh, no, that's not right. Interesting, but not right. Now these can be tweaked. Um, higher values do more occlusion, but are more expensive. Contrast, it's just a tweakable exponent similarly. And the minimum occlusion is something I have a very low value if I have at zero you get these severe effects.
effects again if you have it too high and so on. So you have to just tweak that and that's my for this map that's what worked for me to get it to be not too obvious and striking to get enough light in to avoid the no bounce light look but not to be too bright. Now I can't get as dark or as big contrast as static light builds but that's the trade-off. Um, that's just a sort of tweaky thing as to taste. I think that's everything you need to know for the skylight. Um, so yeah, the distance field, uh, ambient occlusion and the skylight you have to tweak to get good interiors. As for your exteriors, you need to look at your sunlight. Uh, this is a standard thing, quite neat. Um, intensity, obvious. Um, the atmospheric stuff I won't deal with here. Um, the shadow bias I covered. Um, contact shadows is a thing, I think it's quite cheap, but I, I've never had it look anything other than crap. It can sort of look okay for some things, but it's just a bit. If you can get it to look nice, good on you, but I can't. Um, you can play with the values, but it's just, uh, nah. Um, the next interesting thing is, I mean, light shafts is a very easy thing to put in. I don't think it's too expensive. Um, you get people saying, oh wow, look at the quality of this. Um, but it's just a, it's a tick box. It's nothing special. Your basic UE4 lighting, it's just a tick box. Um, and the bloom, I don't care for it. I, I don't care for it. So, I mean, you can obviously turn that right down. But I don't think that's to my taste. Oh, well, maybe that's all right. But uh, I haven't got that on this one. Distance field shadows. Again, it's using this distance field stuff again to do something that looks nice, but uh, cheaply. I've got it nice and far away. Um, honestly, can't remember why I have that. What that is. It makes a difference to the far view, I think. There you go. So it's well. There's a whole lot of stuff there. Um, if you bring that in nice and close, you get these nice shadows close in, but the shadow cascade beyond that. Um, so this thing with the sort of dappled lighting, I think that is a distance mesh field feature. Or maybe not. You can play with that, but basically you want that to be uh, quite far out so it's um, uh, you don't see the join basically um, how far they can be cast so this is just a cost thing so if you make that low uh, it's not doing what I expected I should really have done a bit of research before talking about this um, Yeah, tweaky stuff, tweaky stuff. Um, cascaded shadow maps. This is not, uh, I suppose, dynamic lighting, also stationary. Um, so, how far can a movable light? This is a movable light. Um, so, if you turn it off, you get rudimentary shadows that aren't nice. So, cascaded shadow maps are good. I can't remember everything about them. Um, you get more definition. Uh, so the exponent, um, some people, people suggest putting it down a bit lower. You have these three cascades by default, um, near, medium, far. The bigger an area they have to cover, the less well defined the shadow is. But beyond that transition, you get worse quality shadows. So it's a balancing act to get a nice transition, but have a lot of detail where you need it. So if I pop that back to three, I've got a very poor example. It's, it's hard to see exactly what difference that's making. 
but there we go if you put extreme values you just get the shadows and that's better um, and that's how much it fades zero just it's a bit of a sharp transition you can see there's a line there where there's a transition so it needs some work point two just smooth that out a little bit and more tweaky stuff uh, the max draw distance this is something you can use for lights I'll come to but it's not very nice to use it for sunlight because the effect would be uh, unnoticeable perhaps it's ignored for the sunlight um, light function um, just uh, it's IES stuff and I don't think it works for sunlight actors but I'll come back to that so um, the skylight and sunlight can be tweaked to just give nice shadows you'll have to come back to it at different points in the project just to make sure it's working um, but the default effect is quite nice and not too um, hard your foliage um, the big stuff I have set to shadow but um, shadows are expensive generally with dynamic light so something like a log I will have shadows on um, but grass grass I'm not going to bother so if I find thick grass so um, cast shadow well maybe I'll take that off so let me find some thick grass here we are um, no shadow this stuff looks horrible without shadow so I have to keep the shadow in but some other stuff uh, you might find you can take the shadow off and that will really help so the landscape grass which is done somewhere else that I think I've taken the shadow off so um, let's see one is my main grass level uh, there's the grass cast dynamic shadow off so I save a lot of cost let me just drag it off and then put the shadow on so you get a bit of an improvement with the static shadow and that's not all the grass Co oh, casting shadow um, but it's not worth it for the cost so let me take that off again um, some of the grass is a bit weedy but I save a lot of uh, CPU GPU by uh, turning the shadow off that so if you're stuck for performance just turn shadows off things um, and now we have sort of internal lights and I have in this case blueprints it's not a bad way to do it uh, for some reason didn't work in static lighting cause lighting bugs but here we're fine so um, if you put your uh, lighting in a blueprint I've got the f sort of the fitting mesh I've got a bulb mesh and in this case I've got a spotlight going down and a second light just to illuminate the ceiling uh, it's a little bit of a luxury to have the second light you don't want to have too many movable lights overlapping it just starts to really add up uh, shadow bar is not important for this one but uh, what is different with this light uh, first of all the attenuation radius 100 is very small so it just lights that area that helps to keep the cost down but more than anything else you want to put a max draw distance on your lights to, uh, not sunlight or skylight because um, that's a big win basically so if I was to change that where's it gone change that to maximum draw distance of a hundred and compile that it actually turns off at a distance which is very noticeable I don't care for that effect but if the choice is to have good performance or lights that are always on I'll do that but when I make that a bigger draw distance um, you are hard pushed to notice when it stops drawing there you go so it's almost uh, looks like a normal visual artifact as you approach the window and you see there that light there so it's a little bit, little bit jarring but you don't notice it if it's something small like that and the main light 
also fades out but at a bigger distance but also being a spotlight it's going to illuminate down you don't see inside buildings to the things that are being illuminated so that can actually be quite low um, and that those two things of reducing the attenuation as much as you can and I'm just going to drag this off so I can do a um, dynamic change the attenuation as low as you can have it um, in fact let's put it here so the spotlight has an attenuation of 700 if I put 200 that's not enough but most floors you know that's enough 400 700 almost a luxury it's not adding a lot just a bit more illumination so 500 will do most situations and you can tweak it where you need to tweak it for a particular setting um, now that's something that looks a bit wrong and that is actually intentional um, because something else I've done for these rectangular window lights which I'm not sold on because they illuminate people standing by them in a funny way um, for dynamic lightings these are not the nicest version of the light it's more like a point light that only affects one hemisphere um, so if you make it cast shadows it's a bit severe it won't have that problem but it's a bit severe um, so for these because they're small radius I just have them not cast shadow and actually for most of the time you don't notice except when the it goes through things um, like that but that's a sacrifice on it because not doing any shadowing on these lights must save a lot of performance and they also fade out um, so that's how you keep things under control with dynamic lights basically uh, there's another thing you can do with the dynamic with the distance mesh fields um, and IES textures is a thing that's quite fun I'll come back to that um, ray trace distance field shadow so you've got a shadow for that to work but it's a cheaper version of a shadow that's in many cases nicer so shadows are on let's click that it actually gives you a nice soft shadow using the distance mesh fields but it also gives me a hell of a lot of artifacts um, really psychedelic effects so I kind of don't use it because in any building certainly you get really weird um, effects often quite far away from the light uh, but that's a thing you can try and you may have to turn on uh, yeah yeah distance mesh field distance fields um, but yes, yeah, so it's low cost, but for most stuff for me, I find it just doesn't work, so I don't put it on. Um, uh, IES textures, let's find, let's put one on this light. Uh, I've not used these, but they're possible to use. Um, here, now I've got a pack of these. Um, oh, look. But you can see it gives you the potential for quite interesting lighting without a huge cost um, so your classic to uh, flashlight beams are in this pack um, so I haven't fully played around with this but this might be a way to get nicer lighting too and also to avoid light spilling into places where you don't want it that's a more of a flashlight um, I don't think any of these are appropriate but uh, it's kind of fun. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that one is. Um, so there is a free IES texture pack somewhere on the marketplace. Spotlight, not quite the right kind. So I'm just going to take that off again. But that is a another thing you can do to make your lights more interesting. Um, but I haven't done that yet. Um, so I've got this uh, lamp. Um, again, two dynamic lights in close proximity is a bit of a luxury. Something else I've got. Uh, let me just find a place to put it is a naked bulb that's just a point light with a low attenuation and it fades out after a distance uh, but that's quite straightforward I've got an up lighter and this is um, an inverted spotlight but what I sometimes do rather than having it part of the blueprint I just chuck in a point light uh, with lower intensity just to simulate the bounce light <clears throat> so a spotlight hitting the ceiling might create a sort of virtual light there 
and then you've got to tweak that light manually to put in the draw distance, something sensible. Um, so that's too severe, but you can then put in your fade, and that's too, you know, you play around with it until you can't notice the fade. Let's take that out. Let's take that out. Um, fluorescent light. They also have it pre-programmed with a coloured light to give a bit of variety. So the point light has a light colour which is greenish. Uh, that's just a point light and I've turned off the shadow by default because if there's a shadow uh, you can't see it but it, it's quite a severe shadow there. Though for some reason I must be doing the wrong thing. Um, yeah, it seems to work fine actually. Um, and this is one that is rather prone to creating odd effects if you turn on this thing. Uh, shame it's not given me any examples anywhere. But yeah, trust me, it can make weird lighting effects. Um, so that's just a standard thing I can just drag in, copy. If I have more than one of these in one location, I will tweak them to have a um, to reduce the attenuation on them and have you know sort of fake the lighting so I'm using less lights another lighting type uh, it's facing the wrong way but you know another point light um, and another thing to, to to work with is that this bulb I think I've set to not cast shadow anything you can make not cast shadow do it uh, somewhere cast shadow because if you do cast shadow you start getting that's not doing it you start getting uh, weird shadows that uh, no, I can't give an example um, but it can create hard horrible shadows if I, I've really just got um, these light types plus a straight down lighter that is a pure spotlight that's relatively cheap um, so it's not terrible. There's a bit of sort of bloom from there because the texture of the light, uh, that's an old material, it's a bit nasty. So that's my sort of building construction kit of lights. Um, and I just whack them in and then tweak them. I think that's about it really for, for the dummies. So just changing the attenuation and the draw distance of the lights is I think the main win. And you can tweak the skylight and the sunlight to make things look nice. Um, right, and one last thing which is very important uh, in terms of quality is you can get big blobs of lighting. Uh, distance field self shadow bias. If that's zero, you get this crap in the corners. Um, 20 is usually enough to make that go away. Um, so uh, I think you can edit it directly, that's just um, so override the bias, um, it's not so bad there, so this is your default appearance but if you just whack that in to whatever it is that cleans up the dark areas. So that's another thing to consider. So the uh, whatever bias of the lights um, gets rid of the light bits um, in the shadow and this distance field self-shadow bias removes the dark bits from meshes. And so movable dynamic lighting need not be too slow and in fact for some outside stuff especially with only the sunlight and the skylight you can actually get speed improvements. One thing that you're not doing with dynamic light is loading a shitload of big textures uh, which is what the light maps are. They're like any other texture. If your landscape materials are a 4k texture you start to get texture streaming and it kind of slows things down a bit and you can get that with the light maps too. So by going dynamic you save a lot of memory, you save a lot of space in your builds and you're not doing so much texture streaming so it can really just give you accidental improvements in that. Uh, it doesn't look as nice as static builds 
but my god, not doing light maps ever again, and uh, not doing light builds ever again. You know, you make a change, bang, that's it, that's how it is. Um, it's really, really sped up my workflow, and I also hate light maps, and I don't make good ones, uh, partly because I use Lightwave. Obligatory shout out to Lightwave. Um, so yeah, I think it looks okay. Uh, and what I might do is just quickly transform one of my other levels into dynamic lighting, so you can see how that goes. So let's do that. <laughs> 